There are five different filing statuses that um, the taxpayer can use. Married, filing jointly. Married, filing separately. Qualifying widow or widower. So this is a surviving spouse. Single or head of household. If you're married, filing jointly, you have to be married on the last day of the year. So that means if you actually got married on December 31st at 11 p.m., you get to file as though you were married the entire calendar year. And the same thing applies to um, if you have a baby. If you have a baby on December 31st, you get to claim that baby as a dependent the entire calendar year preceding it. Um, if you're filed, married filing jointly and one spouse dies, the other spouse, the surviving spouse, is considered to be married at the end of the year. The only exception to that is if the surviving spouse remarries uh, before the end of the year. Um, what are some of the things I wanted you to know? I think that was pretty much it for the married. Um, married filing separately. This really is not beneficial uh, from a tax perspective. It's very rarely done. It's usually from a non-tax perspective um, or reason that people would do this. But this is when taxpayers who are married file separate returns. It's usually as they are uh, getting ready for a divorce. A uh, qualifying widow or widower. Um, this is the status that you could claim for up to two years following your spouse's death. Um, now, if you remarry, you, know, you can no longer qualify as a qualifying widow or widower. Um, and the surviving spouse must maintain a household for a dependent child. That is a criteria for, for this status. Single, pretty self-explanatory, unmarried, um, and you are only this unless you qualify for a head of household. Um, we're going to get into how you qualify for a head of household later, but most um, most people, if you're not married and you don't have kids, you're going to file a single. Here's some head of household um, status information. Um, to be the head of household, you have to be unmarried or considered unmarried at the end of the year. So if we are not married at all during the course of the year, we can be unmarried. Um, we'll have more information later about abandoned spouses um, and separations, divorces. But if you are unmarried or considered unmarried on December 31st, um, you can file head of household as long as you are also not a qualifying widow or widower. Um, you have to pay more than half the cost of keeping up the home during the year. That's so kind of how we get this idea of a head of household. Um, a head of household represents more than half of the cost of keeping up with the home during the year. Um, you also have to live in your home with a qualifying person for more than half of the year. What's a qualifying person, you ask? Well, this is usually a kid. Um, that's the most common situation as a child, um, or a relative who is the taxpayer's mother or father. A lot of times, um, if you are the sole caregiver um, financially for a uh, mother or father, then um, you can count them as a qualifying person. Um, a lot of what relatives, too, that are not um, living independently, um, maybe are unable to live independently for health reasons, will qualify as a qualifying relative. And the parent, if they're a parent, they don't actually have to live with the taxpayer, but the taxpayer has to pay more than half the cost of maintaining a separate household for their mother or father. So, you know, if your parents are destitute and you were paying for their mortgage or their rent, um, and it was more than half of the cost of their household costs, then they would qualify. Um, and the parent must qualify in turn as the taxpayer's dependent. So um, whenever you are using a qualifying person, you have to make sure that that person is also using, um, including listing themselves as a dependent. A good example, and I think your book might even talk about this, if um, a college student is files as single, then those parents cannot use that college student as a dependent, as a qualifying person. Um, the, the parents decide that it's going to uh, make better tax sense for them to use that student as a dependent, then that student would have to um, list themselves as a dependent as well. Um, a qualifying relative who's not this taxpayer's parent, um, the person must have lived with the taxpayer for more than half the year, must qualify as taxpayer's dependent, and must be related to the tax taxpayer through a qualified 
family relationship. Um, in your textbook, they list some qualifying family relationships and what is not a qualifying one. Um, basically, a qualifying family relationship is a taxpayer's descendant, an ancestor, a sibling, a stepmother, stepfather, stepbrother, uh, sisters, nephews, nieces, aunts, uncles, or in-laws. Um, and not considered a relative just because they live with the taxpayer for the entire year. So it has to be a, a related family member. Um, let's see. Head of household, uh, married individuals treated as unmarried abandoned spouses if the individual is married at the end of the year or is not legally separated from the other spouse, does not file a joint tax return. Remember, this is what I was saying. What one person does has to be the same as the other person does on their tax return. Um, pays more than half the cost of maintaining the household that serves as the principal abode or the primary house for the qualifying children for more than half child for more than half the year, and they lived apart from the other spouse for the last six months. Um, as you can tell, this would definitely fit um, a situation of divorce or separation. Um, and then there's a few examples here. So let's assume that Rodney passed away and during the current year Anita did not remarry but maintained a household for her dependent children. Under these circumstances, what would her filing status be? Well, she's a widow. She's a qualifying widow. Remember, you can have this for up to two years, um, as long as you're caring for children. So this couldn't be an old lady who's all by herself. That doesn't qualify as a qualifying widow. It has to be somebody who's caring for children, and it can last up for two years. Assume Rodney and Anita divorced last year, and during the current year, Braxton lives with Anita, and Anita pays all the costs of maintaining the household for herself and Braxton. Under these circumstances, what is Anita's filing tax, tax I'm sorry, filing status for the current year? And that would put her as a head of household. Remember, she's paying for more than half, and that's um, also the abode of the child. Assuming Sean, Rodney's brother, lived with the Halls, but Sean paid more than half the cost of maintaining a separate apartment that is the principal residence of his mother, Sharon, whose gross income is $1,500. Because Sean provided more than half of Sharon's support during the year, and because Sharon's gross income was only $1,500, she qualifies as Sean's dependent as a qualifying relative. In these circumstances, what is Sean's filing status? Well, Sean would be the head of the household because he's paying more than half the cost of maintaining a separate household that is the principal place or primary residence for his mother and because his mother qualifies as a dependent. Hopefully this helps you uh, understand this uh, filing status a little bit better. Some students do have a little bit of trouble um, grasping this. Um, most importantly, I, I really do want you to understand that um, married couples have no tax benefit filing separately.